Lyme disease is a bacterial disease from a bacteria called Borrelia burgdorferi that is transmitted from the deer tick. So it does require exposure to deer ticks, but it's not actually the tick itself that causes disease, but a bacteria that's in its gut that is transmitted through the tick bite into the mammal. There was a time many years ago that the deer tick and Lyme disease were really concentrated in specific areas of the Northeast and Midwest. The name Lyme disease comes from Old Lyme, Connecticut, where it was first discovered back in the 70s. Though it's no longer a regional disease, it's basically almost the entire country. The way Lyme disease is transmitted is from the tick bite. The tick needs to be on the person or the dog for at least 24 hours to transmit disease. And as the blood comes into the tick from the mammal, the bacteria recognize that and ready themselves to be transmitted. And after about 24 hours, they can be transmitted into the mammal. So it does take the tick with the Borrelia burgdorferi, the bacteria in its gut, to be attached to the person or the mammal for at least 24 hours to transmit disease. Clinical signs of Lyme disease are different in people and in our pets. People tend to get a rash. It's called erythema migrans, or a target lesion rash, that occurs at the time of the tick bite or within a few days after the tick was there. And it's a red circle that can get bigger over time um, and last for up to 30 days. The rash is not pruritic, it doesn't itch, and so it's, sometimes people miss it. It's really important not to miss it. If you recognize a rash on you and you've been in a tick endemic area, the proper thing is to go to a doctor and, and, and show them the rash and they will prescribe an antibiotic for presumptive Lyme disease. Unfortunately, we don't see a rash like that in our pets. And so we don't have that early sign of Lyme disease. In our pets, the first signs we see tend to be two or three months after exposure to the ticks and those are signs of pain, fever, arthritis, lameness, um, similar signs to what can occur in people if the rash is missed or not treated. In dogs, we have a unique syndrome called Lyme nephritis where the kidneys are affected from Lyme disease. Um, and if not diagnosed and treated early, this can be fatal. Diagnosing Lyme disease in people, again, starts with the rash. Um, after that, there, there are blood tests that can be run, mostly for antibodies against the organism. Um, and, those, and similar tests are run in dogs. The unique thing that we do in dogs, and this is part of why it's, it's so wonderful to be a dog if you're in a Lyme endemic region, is that we screen for exposure to tick-borne diseases uh, as part of our annual wellness program. Most veterinarians in Lyme endemic areas will test for Lyme disease exposure and other diseases as part of their annual wellness. So screening is a really important thing that's done in animals. I would recommend that every owner ask the veterinarian, can you please screen my pets? dogs, horses, cats, for tick-borne diseases, it's, it's inexpensive and quick and quite accurate. Um, and by doing that, we are preventing disease from happening down the road. Treatment of Lyme disease can be difficult. Um, the kind of earlier signs of the, the rash in people or the pain and arthritic changes in dogs tend to respond very well to doxycycline or antibiotic therapy. In dogs, we typically treat for 30 days if those signs appear but the dogs will appear normal and feel much better within 24 to 48 hours. Unfortunately though, despite treatment, we know that we tend to not clear the bacteria entirely and there still is a chance for recrudescence or re resurgence of that disease sometime in the future. So although treatment is successful in eliminating clinical signs, it is not successful in clearing the organism, therefore prevention is still the most important thing we can do for Lyme disease. Prevention in people and in dogs, unfortunately, it's quite different. We have many, many more tools in our arsenal for tick prevention and Lyme prevention in dogs than we do for people. In people, what's important uh, is to dress appropriately, long pants, actually put your socks on your pants, um, try not to spend time in areas with high grass or shrubs, um, and uh, check frequently for ticks. Your yard can be treated by cutting the grass really short. There's no ticks on a well-manicured, short-cut lawn. You know, the analogy would be, you know, the greens of the golf course have no ticks, only in the rough. Ticks require shrubs, plants, trees, high grass uh, to survive. In dogs, we should do the same thing, and, and checking the dogs every day is, is key. Uh, but in dogs, we also have additional tools. We have tick control products. We have wonderful products today including spot-on products where you place the, the, a drop or two on the dog once a month. We have oral products that you can give orally and they can last for one to three months. Um, and we have collars that can, uh, can repel the ticks as well as kill the ticks. In heavy Lyme endemic areas, I personally recommend combining different products to get maximum protection. Prevention of Lyme disease in people and in dogs starts with the tick. 
we need to make sure that no tick is going to be on us or on our pets, and at least for 24 hours in the case of Lyme. It takes 24 hours to transmit Lyme. So if we were to remove every tick every day from ourselves and our pets, no one would get Lyme. Easier said than done because these are really small. The, the nymph stage of the tick that infects most people is almost microscopic and really hard to see. Luckily, dogs are mostly infected by adults, which are a little bit bigger. So after every walk, every hike, every playing outside, if we were to examine your dog, go over really carefully, especially the areas in the ears and the paws, the areas that we, you wouldn't tend to see just kind of from casual play, and look for those ticks. Removing ticks is not hard. There's a lot of fanfare about it, but it's really not hard. The best way to remove ticks is a sharpened tweezer. Grab them as close down to the head as you can and remove them. Don't worry if something stays in the dog. Don't worry if it, there's a little bit of blood. Removing them is the most important thing. I would wear gloves when handling ticks, though. Th there is a theoretical chance of if, if you pop them and you have a cut on your finger, you could get sick from that. So gloves, tweezers, finding the ticks, and removing every tick every day is crucial. In addition to tick removal and tick control, we have wonderful vaccines for dogs. Dogs can be vaccinated annually, and when we combine that with our other protective measures of tick removal and tick control, that full comprehensive program, tick removal, tick control, and vaccination, works very, very, very well. In dogs, tick removal, tick control, and vaccination. So in conclusion, there are a lot of terrible diseases transmitted by ticks. We really need to make every possible effort we can to protect ourselves and our pets from getting ticks in the first place and from allowing those ticks to transmit disease.